How's it going, people? I'm doing pretty good, except for uh, my computer doesn't seem to want to make my videos without turning them into silent epics. So, I was well into Chapter 8. If I run out of beer, got the old standby right here. I hope it doesn't come to that. There are 18, and then it came to pass as in Chapter 8. <sighs> Anyhow, you know, I, I, it occurred to me, it could be divine intervention, you know, this is a holy book, right? <laughs> Maybe it's Moroni fucking with me, huh? Nah. Besides, I, I'm not going to harm this book, I'm just reading it. I, I, it's like the Koran, you know, I'll read it, but I wouldn't burn it. I'll just keep it, and I'll read it once in a while, you know, and try to understand like I'm doing with this, just trying to understand. I wouldn't, I wouldn't burn this book either. Although I am thinking about painting it gold. What do you think? Wouldn't that be cool? Paint this gold? <laughs> I mean, let's see. This is a 1966 edition. That would be kind of rude, maybe. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I really am. Anyhow, let's get this started. Oh, the hat? Um, that's for shock of God. Uh, he left a comment on my channel said, It's official, I've got Santa Syndrome. <laughs> I was fucking with Shock of God, and he, he took the bait. I've decked my channel out in all anti-Christmas style, <laughs> just for him. Featured my Christmas video with a big picture of Saint Nick. And Shock of God believes everything. It's literally as, the, as superficial as he is. <laughs> I was fucking with you, Shock, and you took the bait. Anyway, thanks for the comment. It's nice to know that you are paying attention. I thought you'd uh, unsub me, but I, I find you among my subs, so either you unsub me and then came back, or I'm mistaken, because I looked before and I could have sworn you were gone. Anyway, Chapter 8 of First Nephi. Ah, I guess you know how this one starts. And it came to pass that we had gathered together all manner of seeds of every kind, both grain of every kind and also the seeds of fruit of every kind. You know how much space you could have saved with a red pencil? This could have been one nice, neat sentence. And seed of every kind, I mean, for North America, I'm of every kind, including cherries. Because I thought the Chinese brought cherry trees to North America, but I might be wrong. So maybe George Washington really did chop down a cherry tree. Nephi and the gang brought it over. <laughs> Could be. All right. Yeah, they just went out and got some seeds, you know. I mean, I, I think it's sort of like they're covering a base, but they don't tell us how they do this, gathering all these seeds. I mean, of every kind? I mean, what does that mean, of every kind? <sighs> Verse 2. Uh, and it came to pass that while my father tarried in the wilderness, he spake unto us, saying, Behold, I have dreamed a dream. Or, in other words, I have seen a vision. Boy, these people, uh... Could learn a lot from Hemingway. <laughs> and behold, because of the thing which I have seen, I have reason to rejoice in the Lord because of Nephi and also of Sam. For I have reason to suppose that they, and also many of their seed, will be saved. But behold, Laman and Lemuel, I fear exceedingly because of you. For behold, methought, that's one word, I saw in my dream a dark and dreary wilderness. He thought he saw this in his dream. <coughs> 
thought he saw a dark and dreary wilderness. And it came to pass that I saw a man, and he was dressed in a white robe. And he came and stood before me. There's like 18 of them in this one. And it came to pass that as I followed him, wait, wait, and it came to pass that he spake unto me and bade me follow him. And it came to pass as I followed him, I beheld myself that I was in a dark and dreary waste. You just said that before. You methought it. Remember? I'm sorry, talking to Lehi here. <sighs> yeah, he's a real reliable witness here. And after I had traveled for the space of many hours in darkness, I began to pray unto the Lord that he would have mercy on me according to the multitude of his tender mercies. So he dreamed that he was in a dark place, in darkness, and he dreamed he was there for many hours. You know, I've never had a dream where I was really conscious of time. Maybe he's different than me. Uh, I've never had a dream where you're going, God, this is going on forever. <laughs> Because, no, I don't have those kind of dreams. Mine's are, mine are action-packed. Uh, and after I traveled in the space, uh, da, 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 da. and it came to pass after I had prayed, hmm. unto the Lord, I beheld a large and spacious field. It's both large and spacious. Hmm. And you must live in a house home. A house home, large and spacious. You know, both those words mean the same thing, at least to me. <sighs> and it came to pass that I did go forth and partake of the fruit. Wait, wait, wait. and it came to pass. Uh, and it came to pass, doesn't matter. See, <laughs> Did, no, no bad. And it came to pass that I beheld a tree whose fruit was desirable to make one happy. And it came to pass and it came to pass that I did go therefore, go for and partake of the fruit thereof. And I beheld that it was most sweet, above all I have ever tasted. You beheld that you tasted. Those are two different tactile experiences, two different sensory experiences. I mean, you know, beheld is seeing, and <clears throat> pardon me. Whew. <sighs> Blame it on the season. <sighs> Yea, and I beheld that the fruit thereof was white, to exceed all whiteness that I had ever seen. See, um, as Joseph Smith had a real thing about white. I mean, he really liked white. White was all right with old Joe. <sighs> Everything's... It's all about that, as you'll soon see. And I, and as I partook of the fruit thereof, it filled my soul with exceeding great joy. Wherefore, I began to be desirous that my family should partake of it also, for I knew that it was desirable above all fruit. <laughs> And as I cast my eyes round about, 
that perhaps I might discover my family also, I beheld a river of water, which is the best kind of river. You know, the ones with water in it. You know, because I hate those jello rivers. I mean, you know, or those lava rivers are really a bitch. But this is a river of water, and that's a desirable thing. And it ran along, wait, and it ran along, and it was near the tree of which I was partaking the fruit. <sighs> and I looked to behold from whence it came, and I saw the head thereof a little way off. And at the head thereof I beheld your mother, Sar Sariah and Sam and Nephi, and they stood as if they knew not, knew not whether they should go. <sighs> and it came to pass that I beckoned unto them, and I also did say unto them with a loud voice that they should come unto me and partake of the fruit which it was desirable of, uh, above all other fruit. And it came to pass that they did come unto me, and partook of the fruit also. Eighteen of these. And it came to pass that I was desirous that Laman and Lemuel should come and partake of the fruit also. Wherefore, I cast mine eyes towards the head of the river, that perhaps I might see them. And it came to pass that I saw them. But they would not come unto me and partake of the fruit. And I beheld a rod of iron, and it extended along the bank of the river, and it led to the tree by which I stood. And I also beheld a straight and narrow path, which came along by the rod of iron, and it, and it was, it also led by the head of the fountain unto a large and spacious field, large and spacious, as if it had been a world, a nice flat field, just like the world. <laughs> and I saw numberless concourses of people, many of whom were pressing forward that they might obtain the path which led unto the tree by which I stood. Numberless. There's no such thing. <laughs> you just were too lazy to tell us how many there were. Should have given one of those clicker counters. And it came to pass that they did come forth and commence in the path which led to the tree. And it came to pass that there arose a mist of darkness, yea, even an exceeding mist of darkness, insomuch that they who had commenced on the path did lose their way, that they wandered off and were lost, which is the same thing, said differently.
it came to pass that I beheld others pressing forward, and they came forth and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron. And they did press forward through the mist of darkness, clinging to the rod of iron, even until they did come forth and partake of the fruit of the tree. That must be some really good stuff to go to all that trouble. And after they had partaken of the fruit of the tree, they did cast their eyes about as if they were ashamed. So, it filled his heart with joy and it filled theirs with shame. It's a pretty damn unreliable fruit tree. And I also cast my eye. That's Lehi talking, by the way, with Nephi editing. Abridging. <laughs> and I did also, wait, and I also cast my eyes round about and beheld on the other side of the river of water <laughs> a great and spacious, great and spacious building. And it stood as if it were in the air high above the earth. Like a castle in the sky, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk and all that, or... Or are we just talking about like a Tower of Babel? <laughs> and it was filled with people, both old and young, both male and female. Then why not just say it was full of all kinds of people? Yeah. We would have got that. A little excessive there. And their manner of dress was exceeding fine. Sounds like the Sunday mo go to meet and church group. Yeah. Sounds like, yeah, let's see. And they were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers towards those who had come and were partaking of the fruit. That sounds about right. Sounds like the Sunday go to beaten crowd. And after they had tasted of the fruit, they were ashamed because of those that were scoffing at them. And they fell away into forbidden paths and were lost is kind of like two ways of saying the same thing, isn't it? And now I, Nephi, Nephi is still talking. I mean, Nephi is talking now. See, that was Lehi talking through Nephi. Now this is Nephi talking, so he had to say, I, Nephi. So, you know, we're, you know, we're back to scene. Now I, Nephi, do not speak all the words of my father, but to be short in writing, that's a great idea. You should try it, Nephi. Behold, he saw other multitudes pressing forward, and they came and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron, and they did press their way forwards continually, holding fast to the rod of iron, until they came forth and fell down and partook of the fruit of the tree. Yeah, that must be some great stuff. And after he saw, oh wait, also, and he also saw other multitudes feeling their way towards that great and spacious building. Don't go there. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Damn batteries died on me. <laughs> I went ahead and saved the footage. I can't keep doing retakes, otherwise I'm going to be sick tomorrow. <laughs> Anyhow, it's still one setting. Um, Alright. And it came to pass, and I was, for fairness sake, I'll take an extra shot. It's technical difficulties, you know. We resume program in progress. Damn, that's nice. This is some good shit, folks. And it's not too expensive. And it came to pass that many were drowned in the depths of the fountain, and many were lost from his view. That's Layman. Uh, Wait, that's um, Lehi. Excuse me, that's Lehi. The 
That would be fine. The dad lost from his vision in this dream. Uh, lost from his view, wandering in strange roads, and, a gr and great was the multitude that did enter into that strange building. And after they did enter that building, they did point the finger of scorn at me and those that were partaking of the fruit also. But we heeded them not. These are the words of my father, for they, for as many as heeded them, had fallen away. These are the words of my father, for as many as heeded them had fallen away. And Laman and Lemuel partook not of the fruit, said my father. And it came to pass, after my father had spoken all the words of his dream or vision, take your pick, which were many, he said unto us, because of the things which he saw in a vision, so I guess they made up their mind, it, it was a vision, not a dream then. He exceedingly feared for Laman and Lemuel, yea, <laughs> he feared lest they should be cast off from the presence of the Lord. And he did exhort them then that with all the feelings of a tender parent that they would hearken unto his words that perhaps the Lord would be merciful to them and cast, and not cast them off. Yea, my father did preach unto them, and I'm sure they enjoyed every moment of it. And after he had preached unto them, and also prophesied unto them of many things, he bade them to keep the commandments of the Lord. And he did cease speaking unto them, at least in chapter 8, because chapter 8 is over. Because I'm sure he talks to them later, but it says he ceased to speaking to them as if he never talked to them again, which isn't the case. Uh... Chapter 9 has no and then it came to passes. It's real short, so let's just blast through it. Because it's really important. 1 Nephi, chapter 9. And all these things did my father see and hear and speak as he dwelt in a tent in the valley of Lemuel. It's funny, though. I can't find a single map of the area of the Red Sea in, you know, any of the Bibles I have, and I've got quite a few, uh, <laughs> that have a valley named Lemuel. I guess that was their own private little name for that valley. A little sentimental thing that nobody else in the world knew about. <sighs> and also a great many more things which cannot be written upon these plates. Here we go again about the process behind the book which they want to make sure we knew happened during the early Iron Age. And now, as I have spoken concerning these plates, behold, they are not the plates upon which I make a full account of the history of my people, which hasn't happened yet. For the plates upon which I make a full account of my people, I have given the name Nephi. Wherefore, they are called the plates of Nephi. I shit you not. Uh, after mine own name. And the plates also are called the plates of Nephi. That's, uh, by the way, chapter... Uh, I mean, that's verse 2 of chapter 9 if you want to check it out. If you don't believe me. Of First Nephi, chapter 9, verse 2. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Nevertheless, I have received a commandment of the Lord that I should make these plates for the special purpose that there should be an account 
engraven of the ministry of my people. Unto the other plates should be engraven an account of the reign of the kings and the wars and contentions of my people. Shit, that hasn't happened yet, but because he's a prophet, Sometimes he knows shit in the future, but other times he's completely caught off guard. And this time he knows every fucking thing. And he's, he knows that his people are going to have kings and wars. Although it is a safe bet. Wherefore, these plates are for more part of the ministry. And the other plates are, are for the more part of the reign of the kings and the wars and contentions of my people. Wherefore the Lord hath commanded me to make these plates for a wise purpose in him, which purpose I know not. But actually you do know it was to... Oh, cerebral hemorrhage moment. <laughs> but the Lord knoweth all things from the beginning, wherefore he prepareth a way to accomplish all his works among the children of men. For behold, he, it's amazing, they don't capitalize he when they're talking about God. It's almost like they know it's a blasphemy. He hath all the power unto fulfilling all his words. Yep, sure enough, all lowercase. Just saying. And thus it is. Amen. And that's the end of chapter 9. And how about that? I finally made it. And one more for the road. Merry fucking whatever the fuck. Peace out.